the construction itself with the change of scenery with the change of the society um, it's not a, an easy place for uh, a designer when you are a woman of course this is worse last month i was working on the carpentry construction and uh, uh, the client came and I mean the friend of the client came and he just told me like oh we were wrong about women and he really told me this and I was like what I was like yeah we were wrong about women uh, we are working as a guy and I was just like okay come on like I mean it was a old guy 60 years old and I didn't care about it I was just like okay I can I can carry a beam of wood uh, as everybody I don't Critical concrete is quite an unusual place for many reasons. One of the most apparent ones is that currently a lot more women than men are working at CC. Which is the complete opposite of the rest of the construction industry, with women only accounting for 3 to 6% of the construction workforce in whole Europe. For this video, we went out to interview three amazing women who are active in the world of construction. By introducing them and sharing their stories, we want to highlight the important work that women carry out in this field and also the challenges they're still facing today. We spoke to Anna Antunes, an architect who works with natural construction, Laurent Conner, who manages and assists in auto construction projects, and Katharina Frankini, active as a researcher concerning women in architectural history. In this video, we will share their insights, experiences, and different perspectives on moving forward. So we tried to create some itineraries of works designed by women. And it was not so easy for many reasons, but one of the reasons is that women had difficult to build, to do, and to work in the city center with important and relevant public works. They work in city center, but especially in restoration, renovation, and more in interior design than in new buildings. This is in general. So, of course, you have always exceptions, uh, etc. We can say, in short, that there was, we can really prove that through the 20th century, women in construction were segregated in some specific fields uh, that are connected to the role of women in the society. Also, I remember once when we were working, we, we called the engineer to work with, uh, for the green roof, and the engineer just arrived. We were like, so it was we were two, we were three people. It was me and Samuel and another colleague, and directly yes, the engineer just came and he was just talking to the guys. And even if I was having the questions, I was sending him the mails, like I was the first contact with him and he just arrived and talking with the men. And sometimes it's always, it's true that you need to, maybe feeling that you need to make more efforts to have the attention or not having the attention, but just to have the consideration of being there on the working side also with them and not only being the secretary taking notes. people that are in construction are men and uh, for them to get instructions for, from a woman uh, it's difficult okay because one thing is they are not educated in that way then that, another thing is they, they don't feel that they are sure of the kind of work they're making and also they they just want to do it anyway they are not concerned with the quality of the thing they're doing so when a woman comes and says 
uh, you should do it like this because that is not well or this is a better way. This is a, a big problem in their mind. All of those issues that we have in society, in construction, you have them all together. Today, we are partners in a project that is uh, named Women's Legacy to write a white book in order to propose some actions to enlighten women's legacy and to cover some gaps in the past as in the present. Among the actions we propose to add to a regular curriculum in universities, courses related to gender studies all over the disciplines because we don't have this kind of courses in Italy but also in other, many other countries. Uh, there are really few countries in Europe uh, where gender courses or uh, studies are included in the university curricula. In our case, as European differences are not really part of our identity. So we have to work on this subject. And this was really also a really um, funny experience because so we were, um, were furnishing a, a house for a family and so it was really support for them. To, the guys has to help us because we we're building it with the inhabitants. But here, like the mother, she was so strong. And when she started to, to work with us, she was really like, OK, come on, boom, boom, boom. Like, so, but they were also saying, hey, you're a girl. Why are you doing this? And, Having this kind of image that I should not, I, I had not my place there. But in this case, then I think it proved a bit that I could do it. And then the girl of the camp, they could do it also. And then when they started, it was really funny f to work with them. And in the beginning, the girl were like, I won't do it. My husband will help you. No, no, I won't do it. And then at one point, after a few days, they started to do it with us and they were like, oh, okay. And then they showed us that they were really, really strong and that they <laughs> were doing it like so, so strong. And yes, it was really funny. I mean, a good experience, I think, for them also. And I mean, they, they managed to change their mind in front of their husband, you know, like, and... Because for sure they are strong because they are cleaning clothes, making food and carrying many weights, but never in the construction site. And I think it proved them that they could do it. And this was really interesting. On Sunday, I went for a walk uh, along the river Po. There is a garden. And a really young girl, six, seven year old, asked me, would you please try my steps? She was a, a, a young architect and she excavated in the ground some steps. And she asked me to step on in order to test if the step were well designed and made. And I found it very interesting. And so she invited me to visit her building site and was under a tree and the steps. And under the tree, she designed a form, a shape with a sticks. And she told me the building site was the place she was working on. And so I asked, but uh, are you the leader? Are you the head of... I uh, know, she told me, we are coming here with some friends to do a place for people to relax. She used very interesting terms. Uh, I, I asked her, but you are doing this alone. No, 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 we are a team. Where are the others, I asked. And, and she said, ah, not here because... Sometimes uh, they can come, sometimes not, it's very free. And so I asked, so you are the, the head of this um, team? No, there's not a head of the team. 
Ah, yes, why? Ah, because we, we work here, everyone, when is, is quite free. Interesting to see also how they organize this space. And so I ask her about, so do you want to build some walls uh, around? And she said, no, no, of course not. We want to excavate the place and to create seats in the, in the earth for people because we look around and we notice that people don't have places to relax in this park because they don't have, there are not benches, there are not place designed properly to relax, to stay. And so I said, but if you excavate, uh, you find the root of the of the tree, and she said to me, ah, but I don't want to to cut the the root of the tree. I w- we want to leave the root of the tree. We want to leave everything like this because this we 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 like nature. We like the space, so we don't to cr- to build something that is unsustainable. So. In her discourse, she had already everything. She understood already everything. And it's really a pity. Then I was so surprised because she asked me every, all these things that really when I came back at home, I said, I asked myself, but it's incredible. This is the destiny, the bridge, thus no bridge to to build is already there it's fantastic there is really not so many space for women in the city in general yeah you know that for example in i don't know in which country but they say that they book one day uh, for the skate park only for women you know, they closed the skate park for men. And so they say that little by little, women started to go into on the, on the skate park. And after it, the women were more comfortable and they knew how to skate. And then they could share the space with the men because they were able to share space and to skate together, you know. Also the fact that we need more space for everybody. I have more some experience because I had a, a space where I could um, exercise and learn and, and experiment and then yes exactly <laughs> yeah I guess uh, you you now have your own skate park for many women and other people to <laughs> come and join you <laughs> yes yes it's a bit like this I open my skate park I, I should make this uh, the slogan should look for something that you feel good doing it and the only way for you to feel good doing it is to be good in what you're doing and not to uh, be better than the others most of the time when you are sure of the kind of work that you're doing and you appreciate the work you do you you don't have any issues okay it will be easier for you to work with everyone because you will be able to listen, understand, criticize, and come with your own ideas without feeling less. Thank you for watching this video and we hope you enjoyed it. Also, a big thank you to Anna, Laurent, and Katerina for sharing their stories with us. We hope that those stories inspired you in the same way that they inspired us. Also, if you want to know what else is happening at CC, check out our YouTube channel or follow us on Instagram or Facebook.